Our cloud engineers are building a game streaming network to unlock console quality gaming on any device. There's two billion gamers in the world. Some of them have a PC, some of them have a console, some of them have a smartphone, some of them have all three. What if everybody in the world could play Halo? What if everybody in the world could play Red Dead Redemption? Everybody in the world could play the games. What would we have to do in order to make that possible? In order to do that, we believe we need to build a game streaming service. We see game streaming as a great technology, giving you access to the games that you want to play on the device that you want to play them on. Being able to compute in the cloud and then stream to whatever device I'm on, allow me to play with anybody, that's powerful. But when you think about any other form of media, the idea that it's locked to one device is, is just totally absent. I want to be the center of my world, um, and I want the devices around me and the services around me to be available wherever I want them to be. What does it mean to completely change the paradigm of how we play? The first thing people say is, you're crazy. You can't build a service like that. What about latency? What about the level of detail? What about the richness of the game? Is my experience going to get degraded? We are a gaming company with content and community, and we happen to also have a great, strong first-party cloud in Azure. It makes us uniquely positioned here. Azure supports 54 regions in 140 countries, and we're going to build hardware to deploy into those data centers. We have our first rack of console hardware in the data center in Quincy today. And we've taken an existing Xbox console, we've broken it out into its component parts, and can actually build a single blade unit that can host multiple Xbox systems at one time. So we've actually built not just the blades themselves with the boards inside, but all the infrastructure associated with it. We have evolved the platform. Uh, we're readying the data centers. We're readying the network. We have increased bandwidth. We're introducing new ways to do video encoding and decoding. We are going to be pushing the edge of what's possible, even with 5G, which hasn't been deployed worldwide yet. So how real is it? The first time I played Forza on my Android phone, it was just amazing. You're playing your favorite game and it's streaming. You'll be able to play with an Xbox One controller connected via Bluetooth. And if you don't have a controller, you'll be able to play with our touch input controls. I'm a huge console gamer, but now when I'm done with the console or my son walks into the room and he wants to play something else, I don't ever have to stop gaming because I'll be able to game the games that I love on every device that I own. As we think about this next step for us, the idea of putting the gamer at the center is critical to how we goal ourselves in the gaming team and the Xbox team. We love the device that we build, our, our Xbox consoles. We want those to be world-class, the best place to play. Consoles are still going to be a flagship experience. You know, you're going to have that immersive, high-fidelity experience with your amazing sound systems. It's all right there. But we know not everybody on the planet is going to go buy a gaming console. It's actually about choice for you. It's amazing for traditional console players because it gives them another place to play. But what's incredible is for the people who haven't been introduced to this type of gaming. People who've never seen a franchise like Halo or never seen a franchise like Gears. It's pretty amazing. We have it up and running today. And when we have it just right, we're going to scale it out in an epic way and deliver it to the world. So if you thought the power of the cloud talk was gone, you were mistaken. Today, Microsoft revealed Project X Cloud, Microsoft's answer for cloud streaming and gaming. So with the power of Azure data centers behind it, Microsoft is hoping to play a little catch up in a market where it's actually coming in a little late to the party. Already, NVIDIA has GeForce Now, which has proven itself as a very capable streaming service. Sony has PlayStation Now, which just recently announced that you can download the games to play locally and you're not forced to stream. Last month, Nintendo Switch announced that they were launching streaming on Switch, which allows you to stream games Games that the system isn't powerful enough to run so they were launching Assassin's Creed Odyssey on the switch streaming in Japan and then just last week Google announced Project Stream, which showed Assassin's Creed Odyssey running on a Chrome browser at 1080p 60 frames per second and then today we've got Microsoft revealing xCloud so no matter what you think 
or feel about game streaming. And I know there's a lot of strong feelings out there. Oh, there's too much latency, there's data caps, there's all these reasons why it won't, won't, won't work. Yet, it's what all these major companies are fighting for. And so, whether you like it or not, it's going to play a major role in the future. And these companies are working to come out on top and so although Microsoft is entering behind everybody else, I still think they have a great shot at being the one that comes out on top with this. Their server infrastructure is one of the largest and best in the world. They claim that games are currently running on this service with only a 10 megabits per second connection after developing new ways to encode and decode the gameplay. Now, before people get excited about that, they say, oh, only 10 megabits. I mean, that's, that's not a very fast connection. But to be fair and completely transparent, GeForce Now also only requires a 10 megabits per second connection at minimum to play, but you're not going to have great looking graphics or anything like that. Like if you want to play at 1080p 60 frames per second, they recommend a 50 megabits uh, per second connection on GeForce Now. So we don't really know compared with these other services how much if any microsoft has really been able to actually in, improve this ability but i do think their approach is one of the most ambitious and far-reaching by targeting both pc and mobile players because i know this is something else we don't like to talk about a whole lot but mobile is one of the largest categories in gaming even though we hate to admit it because it's it's the largest because everybody and their grandmother already has a mobile device so of course people are going to play games and whether you play them uh candy crush or you know assassin's creed odyssey the the market kind of looks at this as all being a gamer uh so even though we don't like to really talk about that side of gaming there's still a ton of people playing on mobile just look at fortnite and how successful that has been on mobile and so having the ability to use your Xbox controller to game on your mobile device and have access to your Xbox catalog, I think that could be huge. And then what will be the deciding factor, I think, is actually how Microsoft is going to approach this as far as the price of admission and, and how the games you stream will work. Uh, because one of the problems that I have with streaming personally and many other sphere as well is that if you go all streaming, you're never going to own your games. And so that's one big reason why there's a lot of pushback and, and people not wanting to go to streaming as a service. But I think if you look at the way GeForce now approaches it, I think they have a good approach to it, which the way GeForce Now works is you do have to own the game, you have to buy the game first, then you have the ability to download it and play it normally, or once you buy it, you then can also stream it. So you still own the game. So Microsoft could definitely go that same approach and say anything that's attached to your account, at least with a digital game, that's your game and then you would be able to stream it and not be charged extra. I think it would be hard for them to charge extra considering how hard they've went after Sony for charging people to stream and play games that they have already purchased before. So I think it would be super hypocritical for them to come out and say, well, even though you may own this game, you still gotta have to, uh, to pay to stream it. Um, so I think Microsoft could easily verify somebody owns a game if you look at a digital copy but what happens if you own the physical copy of a game um I, I don't know how that's going to work and so that's one of the things we're going to have to wait to see how that works but i think even setting that aside you look at their service such as game pass and and paying ten dollars a month and instantly having over a hundred games that you could then play or stream i think that would be huge and so it, it also gives credence to the idea that Microsoft could release two consoles in the future, a more powerful hardware focused console and then a streaming box that could compete with Roku or Apple TV um, and, and Apple's device as well that could stream all your games as well as provide you entertainment. So I think Microsoft is setting themselves up 
for a bright future. And the power of the cloud may indeed be able to deliver Xbox a competitive edge when it comes to game streaming. So Microsoft's xCloud will roll out in 2019 in the form of a public testing. And of course, stay right here in the VGN for all the latest news and headlines as they come. And as we get more details on the service, I'll be sure to push them out to you. That does it for me, the Red Dragon. I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching.